<laughs> Welcome to a glimpse into the conversations between two individuals, one that's super passionate and one that's super opinionated, both around the topic of analytics. Luke? I'm Luke. I am a consultant at Slalom Consulting, and I am really excited about data visualization, advanced analytics, and things in the cloud. You can follow me uh, at, in, on Twitter. That's where you're going to probably find the more humorous more cool stuff that I do, if anything is really cool in analytics, at Luke Stanky. Uh, Stanky like the leg without the Y. Wow, that, that's, that's certainly a mouthful. And I'm Anne. I uh, am an analytics evangelist. I run my own boutique consulting firm that specializes in data visualization and data analytics. You can follow me on Twitter at my name. It's at Ann U. Jackson, or you can go to my website, jackson2.com. On Twitter, you'll find cat emojis. On my blog, you'll find informative and insightful takes on the world of analytics. So Ann, what are we talking about this week? So in our inaugural session, we're talking about iron viz. This is a great topic because in my mind, this is how we solidified our friendship. We met at TC17. I like to say that we cemented our friendship at Iron Viz. Luke and I both showed up, what, two hours in advance of Iron Viz to ensure that Who we got- Who doesn't show up two hours seat? early? You okay. have to be there, front row. That was what I was thinking when I went the to the mile? line. I agree, I mean, so th for me, I went to Iron Viz 2016 and I think I sat in like a really bad spot and I didn't get any of the energy any of the enjoyment out of it. So I was dead set on being front row center to see what I, my goal was to see the sweat on these people's faces as they were doing these 20 minute dashboards to see the agony that they were going through as they were doing the build or the, the excitement, the enthusiasm, whichever one. Yeah, that's uh, it's really cool to watch. And I didn't remember in 2016, that was the first Tableau conference that I went to. And I, I immediately knew though, of all the things that I was gonna do, I wanted to make sure that I was as front and center for the Iron Viz. And little did anybody who I met who was also sitting up there that we would all eventually be Twitter buddies. And um, now we all enjoy each other's company in person and online. According to you, from, from your perspective. Well, in my, in, from my perspective, they tolerate me and I enjoy the things that they put out. Good. So that's good. I guess we've transitioned into our very, very first topic, the Iron Viz Feeder Competition Books and Literature. What do you think about the winner? The letter E. Yeah. I mean, what's really interesting is... Uh, you know, you get about a month at this year, they, re, they retune the rules, you get about a month to actually participate. So there's a bigger a ramp, uh, more time to, to put something out. But the main thing I remember initially about the winner is he put out his submission very early. Um, Ludovic is French, and I'm under the impression that English is not his first language. So I know that um, he got a lot of feedback from the community on how to improve the storytelling, which I think is ultimately what won him the uh, competition. He was able to really go, I, I, I kind of think there was a lot of different layers of analysis there and some of them were really meta. I mean, he built out a story. It was set up like a book. There were different chapters. It was a narrative. You were the character. You were the main character in the story and it was going through each part. And then there was supporting um, charts, visualizations to help um, you be directed further along. And I think uh, it also communicated a lot of love that he had around the topic. That's something that I always look for is um, passion around whatever it is you're analyzing. And I think he demonstrated that. So I also think it was kind of innovative. So I was um, impressed with the winner and I was actually kind of pleased to see that he submitted so early. And I think that honestly, the community feedback uh, helped to uh, bring home the win. He got the benefit of people helping him make it better, which is what we're all about. What about you, Luke? Can I, I liked it. I thought it was really awesome. I thought it um, really fit with historical winners, the really grand people who have made it onto stage or the grand visits that have won. Um, I thought that there were there was a clear top three and they were the top three that the judges had. But I really, there, I think the differentiator here were the unique visualization types. Uh, how, if you just go back and you look at his chapter one and you take a look at this, this uh, it's like a line chart of some sort. 
and it has each of the, the vowels on this chart. It's very unique in how it's set up. And I, I was, it, when I have to ask myself, how was that chart created? That's when I know there is a differentiator in the quality of the work. If I don't know how it went on, then it, the, then the, if I don't know what went on, then it's just, a, a, that's, that's what it is. It's the differentiator. When I look at others and I can go, oh, like I know exactly the approach that they used here. It, it, it certainly, be, some of the others are beautiful, but it's like the, how did he or she do it? That's really the differentiator in the end. And I think I want to add on that, you know, there's a lot of, vi you, you mentioned restraint in sort of innovation and, and making things that aren't um, quite obvious. I think there was a lot of visual restraint that, that helped with execution. There was only, you know, three or four colors used throughout. He used the color red uh, to signify E. And that, I think, um, really made it very visually strong. And I liked the um, illustrations that he chose as well. Thought that they fit. They weren't overbearing to the final project, they were good companions. And I would just say that since I am someone who's not afraid to nitpick and provide some sort of, I wouldn't have done that or I would have thought about it differently. In chapter two, there was like that swipe the book open and I just, that's something didn't need to be there. The rest was so, it told the story itself. And, um, you know, when I'm thinking about interacting with the visualization, I want to get to the insights as fast as possible. And I think that was, that was a miss, but still, again, I am nitpicking on the most successful visualization. So I guess, Anne, that's, we've sort of talked a little bit about the winner. Did you have like, say, a, maybe we want to talk about your own top five? Yeah, so we can talk about my top five. It's kind of tough. The things that I look for in my top five are probably not necessarily the things that the judges are looking for. You know, you think about the criteria, which is um, design, analysis, and storytelling. I think for me, the two that are more important are design, but it has to fit the theme of whatever the analysis is. And, and really, I'm looking for innovation or intention in whatever is being built out. So there are some that came to the top from my, to, of my list, which I don't think really hit the storytelling perspective, but demonstrated a story in their own way. One of them was um, Neil's Don't Panic. You know, he created a unique visualization to help play out the story of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He really, I think, um, did something different that you're not likely going to see in any, you know, it, it's a Neil Richards original, right? So I'm always appreciative of that. It's very subdued from a text perspective. I'm not someone who likes to clutter up <laughs> visualizations. Uh, and I, I think we should probably go ahead and tell our future audience, whoever's out there, is that secret, the secret is out now. We don't like text on our visuals. Yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a, one of the things that I'm very much for is uh, you get to figure out your own story and analysis. The, the onus on the creator, the developer is to curate and to set up a story or set up a view for you to draw conclusions, draw multiple conclusions, but take something away from it, but have that ability to explore. I do not personally like to over narrate, um, these types of things. I, I don't think it's necessary. Sometimes it, can, it is, sometimes it proves a point. I like to see things as um, visual aids to some degree. If there's going to be narration, I'd rather it be done in person as opposed to forcefully statically left on a, on a dashboard. So that's one of the reasons why I like Niels is not, not a lot of text. He did um, his own sort of data gathering and he came up with a system to score um, happiness throughout that. I, I appreciated that. Another one that I liked was, um, was Graceful Chaos. So this is something that was completely different. And the reason why I like Graceful Chaos is Naya took, um, she took all of Donald Trump's tweets, she categorized the different words into like adjectives, nouns, and she actually came up with a way to come up with sort of, I think it was slam poetry. She's probably gonna kill me if I get this wrong. But what she did was create, she took something and she regenerated art over and over again. She took a tool to do that and she processed the data and that was the output. So analysis, not necessarily there. Design, absolutely on point. Demonstrating something from the literature world that I had no insight into, that's where I gained something. 
And then really using Tableau as a tool for something I'd never seen before, I think she really sold that. It was clean, it was um, elegant, and it was an experience. She built an experience generator, which sounds like a lot, but that's really what it was. You're never gonna get the same thing twice. The experience is lost when you leave, you get a new experience when you come back. So that's two. Luke, let's hear some of yours. Yeah, so I think it's very, there are criteria for this competition and I don't care about them. And I just want to first share a few of my criteria that I'm looking for when I picked out my favorites. Number one, um, I like charts that are intuitive. They just make sense, right? I guess that's an easy one and that's part of the storytelling and analysis side. But two, I wanted to see that it showcased the power of Tableau. It's really easy to put in images or uh, it's a shortcut a number of things, but I really want to see how Tableau can be used. And I guess I get caught up in the nuances of how people build their visualizations and I'm looking into all the detail of that. And I know the judges aren't necessarily looking for all the detail, but I just get so caught up in it and it's super cool to see. And, and often it's the things that are, are missed, right? We spend a month developing a dashboard and or a data product and we don't necessarily catch all the small details of what we've put into it that said my favorite one uh, I, really i have just five and i didn't i have tiers of visualizations and i'm not not gonna we're not gonna have time to get through all of them but number one is i, I like do i do i say this and i really liked yours and um again I think one of the things from you, if we're, if we're nitpicking on what the judges are looking for, probably not enough text and storytelling of what's going on, but just the design aspect, the text to ink, there's not a lot of text. There's basically no text explaining yep. what, what's in the visualization and it's left for me to figure it out. And I have to go through and figure out what the story is that you're trying to tell. And I enjoy that part. And that's why I really en enjoyed your visualization and I think that there's one that was uh, very underrated, but if you go back uh, and look at it, it's the James, James Comey's memos, I think was a, a, a hidden gem. The, 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 the fatal flaw of this is that the, it's sized for the wrong size screen, but if you like shrink it down onto your screen and then you notice that you just kind of, instead of scrolling down, you scroll uh, to the right, it's sort of, you can see how it was supposed to look on a screen and the story is there. So the, the Comey one, I'll tell you, I looked at it and then I was immediately turned off. I'm not a very uh, politically motivated individual given our particular climate. So I couldn't. Well, you just said, you just said your forward. favorite one was Donald, the Donald Trump's tweets. Fair, for a different saying, reason. She repackaged something and I, I looked at it further. So it's, it's this, uh, this Dada's movement. So, now, I, please don't kill me that I've called it slam poetry and, and just totally, you know, not made it what it is. But Boom, too he late. repackaged it into something else. You like, it, it was an experience. So, you know, there's another one I want to mention, and that was um, Skylar's The Eponymous Phrase. So I almost put that in. I have it on my list. I have a lot of tier one visualization. And the reason why I love that one was because Skylar did an amazing job of, if you look at it, he has To Kill a Mockingbird. He has an amount of analysis around that top book, right? And then he has the next two or three where he's got a little bit less analysis. And then you get the rest of the list is all just, it's consolidated, it's, it's snippet analysis. So it's really hey, successful. I, I know that Skylar's eventually gonna listen. Hey, uh, the reason that I, I don't think it surfaced to be in the top is that Sorry, Skylar, to judge your design, I'm judging it off all of your previous work. And I think there was that element of color or whatever that was just missing just a little bit. I don't think that's fair. And I don't think the judges look at that going into it. it you can't go into something Skylar, and say- don't kill me, we're setting this up. You can't do that. That's not, it's unfair to the participants. And it, it when you go in saying that, like, I have expectations for this person and they didn't meet my expectations, you are forcing them into being something that they don't necessarily want to be, right? Like, maybe be tomorrow. great all the time. <laughs> yes, be great all the time. But 
and I think the judges do go through a process to probably um, anonymize who who these authors are, because I'm sure that there are some people. That's the missing piece. I don't think that happens personally. You see everything on Twitter. The judges are on Twitter. They are following people. It is streaming in. They're seeing it. They know who's is who's. And that, as much as you're going to say you're not going to bias your decisions, everybody has unconscious bias. That happens. Whether you like it or not, you're going, well, this isn't, I, I mean, I did it with Skylar's. I'm not a judge by any means in this, but I think we all do it. We look at it and we go, oh, I liked it. It was really good. However, I know what that individual is also capable of and they like to push it they can push it to another level and to me for that individual whether it's Skylar myself you if it's not at that expectation of what we're used to seeing then you kind of say eh, like it was good but it wasn't your best and therefore I'm going to judge it at that level so you're saying that people you know the audience the judges are allowed to determine if I'm phoning it in pretty much I'm not I'm not saying that they're doing that I'm at on purpose at all i'm saying our unconscious bias does that it's just something that happens whether we like it or not we don't we try not to make those subtle decisions when we're doing this but it happens we can do our best to acknowledge that exists but when we acknowledge that exists which is what we should be doing it still happens like it it's going to happen let me ask you this question were there any submissions where if they had been anonymized you would have been able to guess who the author or artist was for them that's a really good question yours for sure yeah are you kidding me Ann? <laughs> so beyond mine i mean that i think and there's bias there because you know i think right now you're mike, asking me right? to go uh, in hindsight i can go back and let's go look at them with mike's Mike's would be another Mike would be a good one. I, I think with Mike's, you'd be able to say it's him. So what we're talking about is there's another visualization that's choose your own adventure. And we're talking about Mike's visualization here. And that's really in his style. And he really went the whole way with it. Also, tier one visualization. Yeah, I think, um, you know, he was in my top five because analysis, he gets a 12, right? Uh, he generated all the data himself. And not only that, he unpacked all of those books in so many different ways. And there was visual data art that was actually really beautifully rendered shapes that were unique and different for each one. That doesn't just happen. You don't just get that to happen. There's so much creativity that goes into making it what it is at the end of the day. Yeah, that, I think he crushed the work that he did. It was a, the judges had it in the top three. It was top three worthy. Again, going back to, I have to, I have to critique it. It's not fair for us to always just say everybody's doing a great job. I think the one downfall, it might have been too long. It was, I think, just outside of that Goldilocks of the length of the what the visualization needs to be. But again, I'm probably going to have my head chopped off by 20 people after this. But I think the the critique is, it's just a little too much. It was too long, but can't you respect the path? passion of that that's why it was oh, absolutely. Too long, right? like, but, you're like i don't care man this guy's monologuing all of this you know he's monologuing exactly analysis. this is great and who am i just who i'm judging but who am i to really judge someone's work other than the fact that that's what we're doing right now okay so we've talked a little bit about top five i think some opinions have been expressed on how the judging works so luke you know you you kind of said your judging style is different yeah. What do you so think let's just let's just throw this out there for context. Everybody was given the opportunity to give feedback this round, and I said no, I don't want feedback. And I know this. I, I it's the I we're at odds, and everybody would. There's a lot of people who are going to disagree with me on this, but sure, I would love feedback. I normally cherish that. It's, it's what I want from individuals, but I also don't want the the rules around the Iron Viz feeders to dictate the ultimate style that I'm gonna come up with. When I create whatever I'm creating, I want it to be unique because it's within the bounds that I believe the rules are in. And as I get more and more critique, as I get more and more feedback, you know, that's, that's ultimately, sure, it's gonna push me towards potentially winning, but in the end, I'm, all I wanna do is create stuff that is really cool. So feedback for me, not as important. And how do you feel about feedback? 
So feedback's important, right? We're, we're building things. Other people are consuming them. You know, it's nice when you're your own audience, but you're never your own audience. People don't have that um, luxury, right? So feedback is a necessity. Having feedback from an audience is important. Uh, feedback from the, the judges that were a part of this competition is hugely important. I think you're, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't at least figure out what's going through like Alberto Cairo's mind when he's looking at your vids. You know, he's, a guest, ju- he's a guest judge. That's one person's feedback on that. I was sure it would be great to get feedback, but again, you got to be in the top 10 and I'm going to go about how I'm going to go about it without getting the feedback because that's what I want to do. I don't want to be, I don't want the, the, the creativity to be t- tainted by the constraints of the actual challenge. So what you're really saying is that other people's opinions, you're persuaded so easily by other people's opinions that you oh, would rather I'm a not have. Anybody can tell you that I'm a that, That's what you're saying. Like, because there's, there's no harm in at least getting the feedback. It, it's hard, right? I mean, you know, we all want to please people. You can get people's feedback. You can, you can get their critiques. You can disagree with them. You can say thank you for your feedback. And, and that's, that's the end of it, right? And it doesn't really matter. You know, I, have, I, did, I said yes. I said, of course, of course I want this, this feedback. Please give it to me. And it's crucially important because when you look at the scoring that I had for my submission, there's a lot of, there's outliers, right? There's one that gave like storytelling like a one. And then there's someone who gave analysis like a 10 and it's, it's all over the map. So I would love to know from those people's perspectives, from the multiple audience members, I, what, what that means. What is a one? Why is it a one? Uh, I also want to point out that you, that's, there was like some craziness that went on in terms of the variability of the scoring. Oh, here's my stats background coming out. Even though it's four data points, it's really crazy to see a one and a nine but you weren't the only one to have similar outliers. I know that I looked at the, the Lorax had uh, one person who just all the judges, three, three of the four judges had it scored really high. And then the fourth judge had it really low. Um, I, I can't remember the exact score on it, but I was just thought, wow, there's some real inconsistency on, on, on that. And sure. I'm, it'd be great. If we're, we're all, I agree. Feedback is good. I normally am all about feedback. That said, not this time. I just don't want to be involved. Back to the story of where we're at is that I think it, in those cases, it would be nice to have that feedback. Well, Just not for me in this case okay. on this project. Let's not, talk about everyone else. Not for you, but I will go back and I will t- double and triple down on saying feedback's really important. Again, if there is that, if, if people are interpreting things differently for people, and I would say that two of them have very similar backgrounds, right? I would say that Cole and Alberto, theoretically, they kind of have the same approach to good data visualization. I mean, one's more from a journalistic perspective, one's more from a business perspective, but both of them are about simplification, really demonstrating your Point, the point of the narrative in an easy to interpret way and knowing that there's a potential that one of them felt a certain way and one of them felt the other way like that's intriguing right and that yep. it, I think it also means that no matter what you build right at the end of the day some people are going to like it some people are going to hate it some people are going to just click no because it's got James Comey on it it doesn't matter like there's going to be different results maybe right? you're trying maybe the divisiveness of that topic is what the draw is in your mind could have been i mean could have been you know like there's there's all sorts of different ways to to take it so we've we've talked ad nauseum about you know our top five the winner the the scoring the best one it was uh, sorry the, the winner the was one. the best the, one the winner was the I best think one we can, there was consensus that ludovic's was the best Okay. Between us. Consensus between the judges and us. <laughs> yes. So, so hear that, Iron Viz judges, you get our stamp of approval. Good work. A solid B plus. So, I okay. Only do B plus is my oh, highest God. score. We've talked about uh, other people's and we've, we've done a lot of critiquing, right? We've, we've critiqued, we've critiqued the judges, we've critiqued other people's works. We both submitted for this contest let's let's critique ourselves let's let's critique each other we can do that and 
I, I, kept, I think I've already brought yours up because I really liked it. But, Anne, don't kill yes. me. Um, I think the judges, well, they, one of the judges was uh, mean and gave you a one in storytelling. I think that's because you could have used some text to explain what you were looking at. Um, I get your, your, your ambition to think that anybody could intuitively understand what they're looking at. Um, but I think that was, that was the big, big miss for me. Overall, though, what I like about the visualizations you created is that it's novel. One, I've never seen anything like that when we're talking about each of the, the each of the dots within, um, of the line, I forget, you're gonna have to talk about, I'm not really, no, you're I right. don't read much, right? So you got something really cool going on there. And then the tool tips were also really cool. However, I, as a discovery through this process, I've found that tool tips, I've already said that they're not very useful in the end. I think that just the, this competition stamped that for me is that you should ignore tooltips. Nobody looks at them. I've said we that my entire life. Infographics. We are not building infographics. That is what you're saying is we are building infographics. We're not building infographics. Going back to, to your critique, your critique is right. It doesn't have, I did an analysis of text and I didn't want to put any more text on it. Like it doesn't need it. There's the takeaway was just the, the way those sonnets looked when they were abstracted and transformed into colors and shapes. That was it. That was all that the takeaway was. Uh, the, the other takeaway- But I didn't, I didn't necessarily, I didn't know that that was the takeaway. Was that what I was supposed to take away? You were supposed to take away the experience of exploring and seeing some of the different emotions. Yeah, I know. I was building- What are you talking about? You're creating art? How can you create art? I don't understand. <laughs> Tell me a story. Obviously, if you're, if you're creating art, you can't be telling the story, right? Yeah, apparently not, right? No, I, there was nothing deep. The, the, the enjoyment for me came out of the evolution of finding the data, of sending the data through um, sentiment analysis, of finding what, in my pers from my perspective, was the best way to share it in a, in a format that you could see everything at once. You think about that. That's a book of sonnets. Like how else are you ever going to consume it in a single format? And, and that was what I was trying to achieve out of that. I wasn't trying to tell a story. There was no story to tell. The story to be told was the story from sonnet one to 154 and, and some guy's plight about love and, and, and jealousy and death. And, and that was it. Like it was, that was it. Yes, it was really cool. But I think We'll get to this in a minute, but there's a lesson learned around what was missing. There's yes. a difference between making some really cool stuff and making a winning visualization. And I think the trick is, if you're, if you're looking to get on stage, is how do you still take the cool things you're doing over here? And how do you take the requirements of what has historically won? And how do you bridge those closer together so that you can nudge judges towards, hey, this is my viewpoint come on, love this viewpoint a little bit more because it is something that is still original but and still fits the criteria from my perspective. That's fair. I mean, if you're judging... That's why I don't want feedback in part. If I'm judging my own work, I give myself a storytelling of zero. I knew that going in. The scoring was validation that there was no storytelling. So... I'm comfortable with that, and I agree when you think about what it means to be up on, the, on stage. Does, does what I built demonstrate that I can build a really good dashboard in 20 minutes? No, it, it doesn't. It, it demonstrates that I can do really weird things with Tableau, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, it served its purpose for me. So let's talk about yours. So you chose a very interesting topic, which was Harry Potter. So you talk about not very, trying to appease the audience and you go with number one in the world of what everybody loves, Harry Potter. But, and let me tell you why I chose Harry Potter other than to appease the judges is that I have a small child. I don't like reading the typical children's books. Instead, I want to read something that's a little bit more enjoyable for myself and there's new illustrated books of Harry Potter. And why not pick something that, I mean, they're new, but it's something that's very relevant to me. And I also 
did some analysis of the text. Uh, I combined sort of what you were doing with sentiment analysis with Mike's artisanal style of hand coding an entire book. In this case, those choose your own adventure books is probably about as long as the very first Harry Potter book itself. So line by line, I went through and I hand coded that. I mean, we're given a month, so let's come up with something that's a little more fun. Um, and that means make your own data. Um, I also decided to create a really hard visualization and that took a lot of my time. And I think it's really hard to balance creating something that takes a lot of work and a lot of math to get right with um, something that is going to go in depth into a story. And obviously I failed in the, that all the criteria, but what I did was create one really cool visualization. Well, that's what I liked about it the most is it was one chart. Like it was one, it wasn't trying to be so many things. It was very much what it was. And you spent time maximizing, optimizing what it was. I know a little bit about the process that you went through to get to it. I know it was a journey. I know it was an evolution. I know you spent a lot of time thinking there's a lot of thoughtfulness that went into it. And I think that was well demonstrated at the end. Do you think that it told a story? I think it literally told was the, the story, story of it, the book. It, the story, <laughs> it did. <laughs> if Maybe if someone had read it to you, it would have been telling the story. Yes. So it was the story itself and the relationships between that. But clearly what's lacking from that is me saying what those relationships are or highlighting those a little bit more than what I did. That's but right. had I done that, I wouldn't have been able to do I, the visualization would not have been done. I, I know it's hard to think like Luke, you have a month, but life intervenes and you can only spend maybe an hour here and there on it. So I give you a nine for design and I give you an eight or nine, I'll give you eight and a half for analysis because the, in my criteria for analysis is innovative analysis. Like I don't, you, you had to hand code your data, but you really had to think through what you're going to do and actually come up with it. Like it's not, it's more than like it was, that's where the analysis is that upfront effort, that, that struggle that you're talking about. And maybe that's something that the judges can't see or in consumers can't see necessarily is like, yeah, you know what? The analysis was my journey to get to this, right? This is just the finish line. Indeed, I think, and that's why uh, we've discussed this in length. We're talking about it in length today is that I don't care what, how I finish. I wanted to create something that was truly spectacular, uh, whether it's within or outside of the criteria. So let me ask you this, coming out the other side, are you proud of what you created? Um, do you yes. have any haunting regrets? I, this goes back to me loving the attention to detail a little too much. And maybe my regret is spending so much time trying to perfect the pixels of part of the visualization, not even the whole thing. And for me, it's about getting it right because I want to be able to make it uh, repeatable and in the future and that's more important to me than having this one off that looks good this one time i want to have the whole back end design figured out so that if i wanted to go into the next iron fist i want to create this i don't have to spend a, a whole bunch of time figuring it out we can just go do it right away okay so me and that, so back at you what would you change for next time hmm that's a good question so I don't have any huge regrets one thing I think I should focus more on and again like we said I said in the beginning Ludwig won because he got feedback in the beginning that's probably something that I could have done I submitted my um, entry slightly early about a week in advance I didn't openly ask for feedback and it's kind of a struggle because Hey, Anne, hey, Anne. Yes. I said, uh, this is be this is between us and the audience now. Feedback anytime. Oh, yes. yes, and that's fair. Like uh, feedback is one of those things. You are absolutely right. 
I'll tell you guys that I it's, it's this, it. this, this whole conversation is kind of funny considering I'm the one who asked you for feedback and I was continually taking in feedback and yet I don't want it from the judges and you want feedback from the judges but you kind of just put it out there even though we, we had talked about potentially feedback back and forth so a little bit guilty I know for both of us on both sides here being I'm hypocritical I'm very much a hypocrite in this situation because there's, I have a lot of fear, not fear, like we all have fear, but I get nervous throwing it out there. It, that act of pushing submit is so hard. That's the, the, that's the part that drives me. People got to get over that. That's whether it's bad or not in your mind. Well, in my mind, anything I create is a piece of crap. So um, you just get over that and you put it out there. To me, there's, there's always this thing that it feels to you like, oh, it can't be good because it just has my my look and feel. And that becomes your frustration, but you just gotta get over it. Like that's your, that's called your style. That's your brand. So you just get over the f fear of putting something out there. Honestly, if you're doing a good job, you're gonna get people who hate your stuff and you just grow up dealing with that. And you just say, whatever, that's a compliment to me, especially when it's that person who l reaches out to you on LinkedIn, but you're not, connected with to tell you you've made a huge mistake dang that's, that's cold that that's, happens all the time what that, that doesn't cold. happen to you you don't i just what we deal with no people don't say you, you made a huge mistake i and when someone tells me they made a i made a huge mistake then you know what i go back and i look at it and i say all right well did i really make a huge mistake or did i spend hours thinking over the design of this which is usually the case i've spent a ton of time thinking about my approach to all these nuances. And I've worked through via iterations of, should it be blue? Should it be red? Should it be green? I, yes, I know it doesn't, it doesn't appear that I think about the color and, and the design of the, the work that I do, but it, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. Anyway, but Anne, let's get down and get back to where we were one comp right before this competition, right at the end of Iron Viz itself. There was a lot of rippling through the community about the demographics of the participation. So, Anne, tell me, tell me, what do we know about the state of the contest after this round? Well, I think it was like in terms of demographics, I want to say it was like a 50 50 split. So, that part is awesome, right? We're seeing that women and men alike are showing up. It's actually 49% female, 51% male. So that's really positive. I think the energy that was generated by the entire community, both genders, post um, TC17 has really played out. You think about um, Iron Viz Europe, like Sarah Bartlett's going to be up there, right? Like she's going to be, there's going to be a woman battling. So to some degree, like my journey or my goal of being a woman up there battling, I can kind of convey that to, to Sarah. She, she's, she's ticked the box. So I think we're headed in the right direction. And I think what was really nice is you saw a lot of different women, a lot of repeat women, but a lot of new women getting up and participating. You know, the crowd favorite came from a woman. So that's huge. At least we have um, multi-gender representation on those that were actually um, recognized. And you look at the top 10 and the same thing is true. I will continue to contribute and battle. I think it's fun. What, what, what we never say is, one of the reasons I do this is I like to, I'm competitive. I want to get up there. Well, you said in the beginning, Luke, I think it's scary to go do it, but why not? I want a chef coat. I want, a, I want a free ticket to the conference. I want a hotel room. I think if I'm going to be really honest, the reason why I don't want to win is because I can't wear a chef coat like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never really thought about that. Like, what will the chef code actually look like? So, Luke, will you be participating in the next feeder? That's the real question. Always. Um, I have participated in the last seven. I plan on participating in the next one. That's right, and I'm, I have a long-running tradition of submitting a bunch of stuff. And um, it might be successful and it might not. But I always make sure to participate. Because why not? It's an opportunity for people to see your work. And not to get feedback. That's fine. I'll get feedback on Twitter. It will be a big mistake. So my stance is I will be participating as long as it's fun. That's what I've always said. This one was particularly fun. 
And I think if the next one is fun, I will be there. But when it becomes not fun, that's not something I want to do. We're running out of time, man. Just real quick. We're going to end on this. The next Iron Fizz feeder topic should be. Ooh. Uh, video games. Anne's going with video games. I'm going with avant-garde. That's not a topic. That's a, that's a style. That's a. Fine. Video games. Avant-garde. Boom. Let's make that happen. Boom. Call it a wrap. I am a loser. Yep, you lost that Iron Viz competition. I, are you playing music for real right now? Because I can't hear it if you're playing music. Oh, you can't? No. It just looks like you're dancing to, to silence. <laughs>